Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we have a pretty chill video. As it just so happens, there are some orchids which are just opening up that either I've wanted for a very, very long time, either they just look out of this world. I'm pretty much super excited to see these orchids finally opening up. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of these orchids. Yes, we are going to see them at the end of the month as well, but I have a feeling that the orchids in bloom videos will start to get longer and longer if I keep talking about these orchids so, so much. So I will eventually stick to care tips in those videos and leave the talking about the actual orchid and its history for other types of videos, such as this one. So anyway, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I do post three times a week currently on this channel. So with that said, let's start with, I believe, the highlight of this month. And it's a kitty. And here she is. This is the wonderful Catlea Chocolate Drop. And this is the variety Volcano Queen. I am not super knowledgeable when it comes to all varieties of the Chocolate Drop, but I had this orchid on my wish list for the past six or seven years. It was one of the first hybrids that I learned about. I saw pictures on the internet. I was actively looking for orchids that were smelling like chocolate because I could not have the Sherry Baby at the time. Yeah, there was a world at some point where I didn't have the Sherry Baby. And of course, the name Chocolate Drop appeared in my Google search results. And behold, there she is. Now, she is not smelling like chocolate. The name does not refer to that. I do believe it refers to the color. It is a very dark burgundy red color. It does not look like chocolate to me, but it has an incredible gloss on the petals and sepals, not so much on the lip. And visually speaking, this is the trait that attracted me to this orchid the most, except for the color, of course. The color is absolutely gorgeous too, but it's not super, super vivid. It's not like the lady in red, which is still a dark red orchid. It's darker than that. The lip is a little lighter and has some yellow, but oh my goodness, the texture is out of this world. I don't know if I have a glossier orchid than this. Now, fragrance wise, this orchid has a fragrance and many of you guys who have this hybrid told me that you absolutely love the fragrance. <laughs> this is the second day when I have this orchid opened, so the fragrance is not fully developed yet. But to me, so far, it smells like the Cygnotus Wine Delight, kinda. A little bit pharmacy-ish like, but the fragrance continuously changes at this point. So all of the notes will start to layer and arrange themselves much, much more beautifully. So I would say it does have a spicy type of scent, but it is layered. There is some floral tones there, a little bit of sweetness as well. But at the end of the month, I will give you more details about the fragrance, how much the flowers lasted and so on and so forth. Right now, I just wanted to show this beautiful orchid to you and talk a little bit about the history. I actually received it from a friend. This is not from around here. Oh, Sally, I don't know the nursery. It is from the USA. Now, this is a very popular hybrid in the USA. It's also a pretty old hybrid as far as I know. It is not something very, very, very common in the European nurseries. There are other hybrids probably that are newer, that are more popular here, but this doesn't qualify it as a rare orchid. But you know how it is. Older hybrids sometimes get a little bit overshadowed by the new and exciting hybrids, which, you know, might have more blooms than this, might bloom multiple times a year. We just talked about Catleas that bloom pretty much whenever a pseudobulb matures. Check the description and also an info card on the screen if you missed it. Those types of hybrids, I believe, took a little bit the spotlight in the disadvantage of the older hybrids, such as the Lady in Red and the Chocolate Drop. And, you know, I understand that, but at the same time, these classic hybrids, there's just something about them that I absolutely adore. It has a charm to it and I love it. I'm here for it and I cannot wait for the scent to develop more. Alrighty, next up, an orchid which I tried to own in the past and it didn't work out. <laughs> so great for me. This is a Comparadia orchid. I told you in the last video where I showed it that I would not know what the color would be. And many of you guys said it would be pink and I realized why. I didn't tell you the full name. It's actually a hybrid. It's a Comparadia macroplactron. Maybe I'm mispronouncing that crossed with speciosa. So the coloration, as you can see, it's not pink, it's not orange, it's somewhere in between, I feel like. 
but the flowers look absolutely beautiful. Now, this orchid, again, I wanted for quite a long time because I really, really do love these little flowers and I tried to have it in the past. I ordered it as a younger orchid, possibly a seedling, and I received a seedling, basically a seedling, which suffered a lot on transport. I tried to rejuvenate it, it didn't work out so great. It started to grow, but then its weakness started to take a toll on everything. And in the end, I lost the entire orchid. It was also squished on transport, if I remember correctly. So it didn't have a lot going for it and I lost it. And I really, really wanted a bigger sized one. So I put it on my wish list and patiently waited. And this year I found it for sale on eBay at my favorite seller, which is Orchid Man. As you can see, it is mounted. It is not my preferred way of growing orchids generally, not because there's something wrong with the setup, but because my lifestyle and environment doesn't really help me out. I would have to water these way too often. I would not be on top of it and I'm sure they would just suffer. So. As soon as the flowers are gone, I will pot up the sore kid. I just didn't want to disturb the roots way too much because they look like they are very attached to this ceramic slab because it might actually shock it a little bit and make it decide to give up the flowers, which is something orchids can do. If you mess up the root system way too much, they can decide to drop the flowers. So first I wanted to see the flowers. I'm watering this orchid once a day in the morning at least, maybe twice a day in the hottest days. And yeah, it's a chore, but I really wanted to see the blooms. I really like them. I'm not sure if I enjoy the color all that much. Maybe I would have preferred it to be either orange, either pink, but a little bit more vivid. I do, however, enjoy a lot the shape of the flowers. And who knows, maybe this is the first flowering of the sort. No, it's not the first flowering, but maybe it had to adjust a little bit to this environment and this is not the full potential. We're gonna see in the future, but anyway, I am happy to have it because most importantly for me was the shape and the way this orchid is, not necessarily the color. Also, there is no fragrance with this orchid, but she can actually put on a super great show with good care. Alrighty then, this really weird looking creature is not fully open just yet, but I cannot wait. I have to show this one to you. This is the Brassavola David Sander, which is a hybrid. It's not a pure Brassavola. So I guess a correct name would be Rinkovola. I'll be sure to put the correct name in the tag on the screen. This is a hybrid between Brassavola cuculata and Rincolalia digbiana. They're both species. And if you know a thing or two about the Digbiana, you know that it has a very freely lip, very fuzzy lip. Well, it kind of passed it on <laughs> to this. So what this is, is a sort of fluffy looking cuculata. Although it's not a cuculata hybrid, it just kind of looks that way. Now, this is an orchid which I wanted for quite a long time, ever since I got into Brassavolas. My first ever Brassavola bloom was the cuculata and I loved it. I loved it so much that I wanted more like that. And I saw that the David Sander actually ticked the boxes for me. And this was, I think, five years ago or so. So I put this on the wish list, but what do you know? Everybody wants this orchid, and whenever the stores would have stock, they would deplete super fast before I actually will pull myself to make an order. So I always missed it. Whenever it was in stock, I missed it. Kind of frustrated. But finally, I have it. I actually have it for a year or two at this point, but it was a little bit stressed. I'm not sure if it was a young plant or a division. It was stressed though, so I worked on it. These guys bloom once a year, sadly. So even though the orchid became healthy last year, let's say, if I missed the window of opportunity for blooming, the season I mean, there's no bloom. So even though this orchid is healthy for the past year, it was just not her season. This year, on the other hand, Oh, it is. And look at this beautiful creature. Mind you, it's not open. All of these sepals or sepals, I always thought it was sepals, but maybe I'm wrong now that I think about it. So these guys need to open as well. So the full reveal will be at the end of the month, but of course I will not have time then to tell you all about the history of when I wanted to buy this orchid, which I don't know if it's very interesting, but I still want to share it. This is a hobby that I want to share along with the information on care and culture because 
yeah, I like to share stuff with you guys. So the David Sander finally is blooming. I have a new growth in the back here. Very curious to see if it's gonna bloom. A thing to note about this particular one, it produces quite a long sheath, which you cannot see because it's dry, but it was here. The sheath was kind of like this which is kind of big for a brassavola. But being that she has the Rincolalia parent, which does produce pretty sizable sheets, then it's easy to see how the trait has been passed on. This one should be fragrant in the nighttime. Rincolalias and brassavolas to me smell very, very similar, so I don't expect it to smell any different. But of course, I'll let you know at the end of the month. Very exciting times for me. All right, next orchid, it's not a new orchid for me. I have it for two to three years already, but it is the very first time she blooms like this. Before we talk about the blooms, you will see ants on this orchid, it's okay. Ever since the experience last year with the mealybugs and the ants, which was a first and quite unusual for me, I decided to protect my orchids from ants. And I'm doing a very good job on my main shelf, but there is a small shelf which I cannot fully coat, let's say, with solutions. So there are a few orchids that reside there because they have good light. This is one of them. Those orchids on that little tiny shelf, they do have ants, but I can keep a close eye on them. I don't have mealybugs issues this year, thankfully. But yeah, I just wanted to explain the ant situation. So this is well, it came with the tag BC Hippodamia, but I don't believe it is. I think it's a cross actually between the Hippodamia and the Eclandiae. If you Google photos, you will see what I mean. I think she was mislabeled or the label was incomplete. So it's always a good idea to Google the orchids you have and double check that the tag is correct. So why is this orchid special? Well, Look at the flowers, they are out of this world. They look like an inflated version of the Eclandiae, if you've ever seen an Eclandiae. Now, ever since I purchased this orchid, she always bloomed with one or two flowers for me, if I remember correctly. And I always blamed it on, well, I just purchased it. Then, oh, well, it was semi-hydro, it got a little bit too dry for it. And then, oh, I repotted it, it needs to adjust maybe a little bit. Well, I repotted it last year indeed, and she did not bloom last year for me. She was a bit upset, but check her out this year. She has a flower spike here, which has one flower open and one, two, three more buds, like four flowers of the size on a flower spike. She is heavy. So we have four flowers or four buds on this growth and another two here, because why not? Because we can. So she has two directions of growth with an ant on my hand. Nope, don't bite me. I don't know if I have an allergy to ants, but whenever they bite me, it gets kind of like this and it's really itchy. So as much as possible, I'd rather not have them on me, but sometimes, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I'm super excited to see this vigorousness from her this year, which means she's absolutely okay with everything. She recouped, she is not stressed, she is well-fed, she is well litten <laughs> and she enjoys the temperature, which makes me super, super happy. That's the goal with the orchids. It's super fun to purchase new orchids and unbox them and just feel that joy of discovering something new, but it's so rewarding to get an orchid which at some point was not doing so great and then see her flourish into something like this. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel like I did good, you know? So very, very validating plant for me this year. I'm happy to see that my efforts are paying off and what I do is actually paying off because you guys know and I know I did many, many mistakes in the past and that's how it is. The important thing is always, always to learn from the mistakes. We all do mistakes. It's okay. People criticize us. That's okay. I'm sure they don't do mistakes, but hey, we do. Might as well learn from them, right? Anyway, I was sarcastic there. So this is the Hippodamia crossed with the Clandier lovely lovely display hopefully everything will be in full bloom at the same time i am sure that i'm gonna lose some flowers before these ones open but i'm gonna do my best to film it when everything is in bloom next up and i now realize that i'm only showing you cattleyas right <laughs> i think it's their season so next up another orchid which is very validating for me this is the sun made gold we recently talked about it in that very rewarding cattleyas video well, this is a very easy Cattleya to grow and it bloomed for me in the past, so I'm not surprised about the blooms, but this is the first year when I do get almost a full display, if not a full display. Any orchid that is in full health and not stressed will put on its full display. 
This one never did. I always had two, three flowers, one flower. And this is because I received it as a small cutting. It needed to adjust. Then the Leica situation, which my cat Leas were okay with, but it was too dry at some point. When the cat Leas took over the pot with their roots, things started to get out of hand with watering for me. That's why I switched, or one of the reasons why I switched. Now though, I can do a much better job because I have a moss mixture in the pot and you can see she loves it. So I do believe I have close to a full display, if not a full display this year. I have one, two, three, four flowers on one spike and five flowers on the other one, which is still not fully open yet. So I am thinking she can do better than this actually. So I expect the next blooming to be much, much better than this. Now, this is an orchid residing on the main shelf outside. And as you can see, we don't have any ants. We have all of that quote unquote happy sap still attached to the orchid. Ants actually feed on that. That's why they're attracted to my orchids, which is fine by me. As long as they don't bite me, I'm okay with ants. The problem is that last year and only last year, I had an issue with the ants kind of protecting some mealybugs on my plants, which was not cool at all. But anyway, I am taking precautions against ants wherever I can, but it's not a rule that they will harbor or protect the mealybugs all the time. If there are mealybugs, they will protect them, I notice. But if they're not, there's nothing to protect. Anyway, back to the Sun May Gold. This is not a fragrant orchid, but this color and this pattern it just makes my heart happy. I love this color. I love warm colors generally, and I love collecting warm colored orchids. And this one fits the bill. And the last orchid I'm gonna show you today, tis another cat layout, what to do, it's their season. Might as well enjoy it because I love cat layouts. It's the Princess Jackie. This is not an official name, it is just a name we call it. I'm not entirely sure about the official name, many of you guys already know the story, but for those of you who don't, this is my favorite Cattleya ever, and you will be very shocked, right? I just showed you the chocolate drop with the beautiful dark, dark flowers that are glossy. Why do I prefer this one? Because of the fragrance. It has one of the most beautiful fragrances of life, really. It's so hard to describe. It's creamy, it's citrusy, it's flowery, it's rosy. It's everything that brings me joy bottled up in a scent, pretty much. And that's why Princess Jack is my favorite bloom, although I think she has the simplest flowers ever. I like her because of the fragrance. And this year she bloomed twice for me. This is not a hard to keep orchid, but again, I am guilty of actually stressing her out a little bit too much. Not enough to determine severe setback and very, very tiny growths and lack of roots and things of the sorts, no. But enough to make her not bloom as often as she could or with as many flowers as she actually can. This year though, look at this new growth. Very tall, very nice. Now I need to work on multiple directions of growth, which I don't necessarily need to do anything about. I just need to keep this orchid stress-free, warm, bright, all of that good stuff that cat Leas like. But hey, I'm on the right track and I couldn't be happier because imagine having this bloom show all throughout the orchid. That would be fantastic. I will try some artificial ways of determining new growth, which you guys will see. I didn't want to do that this year. I wanted to let all of my kitties kind of recoup. It is their second year in the organic setup. Next year, they will need repotting most probably. And I am already considering changing to some self-watering options. I am from now starting to test out some stuff, which you will see in my future videos, just so I know what to do with them next year. Cause I don't want to do something because I think it will work and and then fail and then set them back again and so on. I am okay with the setup, but you know me, I don't like the saying that says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it because that kind of keeps me from evolving and finding better ways of doing stuff. Yes, this works, but you know what else works? Pushing something heavy to make it go from point A to point B. Wouldn't it be nice if it actually had wheels? It would go much faster. Same story. Wouldn't it be nice if I can find something that will work a little better than this? That's my mentality anyway. I'm starting to test out a year in advance. And I think that is about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for being patient. I am a little bit off schedule with my video uploads. Uh, we just got a new parrot. We're still so happy, but you know how it is. At the beginning, there are things that need to be done, but yeah, we're gonna talk about her in a different video. So alrighty then, thank you so much for watching today's video. Hope you enjoyed hanging out with me today. And I also hope you have a great weekend. Stay tuned, we have some surprises coming this following week. 
subscribe to my channel for more orchid videos, tutorials, experiments, updates and other fun orchid subjects. If you wish to support the channel, do consider becoming a member or visit the merch store linked down below in the description. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, it's always nice to stay in touch there as well. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!